Ealing, Lewisham and Woolwich. Violence began yesterday afternoon in Hackney after a man was stopped and searched by police but nothing was found. Cars were torched and petrol bombs hurled at riot police. In the Clapham Junction area of southwest London, youths raided a Debenhams store and a number of shops stealing masks to conceal their identities. In Croydon, a string of cars and buildings were set alight, including a family furniture shop which survived two world wars but was last night razed to the ground. There were also huge blazes in Enfield where fire engulfed the Sony distribution centre. Well, London bore the brunt of the unrest, but for the first night, youths also took to the streets of Birmingham, Bristol, Liverpool and Nottingham in copycat attacks. This morning, a major clean-up operation is underway. This is the scene live in Enfield, where a warehouse was destroyed overnight at the Sony factory there. The problem, of course, engulfing other parts of the country for the first two or three nights following the arrest last, at the end of last week of Mark Duggan in Tottenham. The violence was confined to London, spreading gradually from Tottenham to other areas of the capital. But now, last night, scenes of destruction and violence in major cities across the country, Bristol, Liverpool, Birmingham. Interrupt there. Let's hear the Prime Minister. Good morning. I've come straight from a meeting of the government's COBRA committee for dealing with emergencies where we've been discussing the action that we will be taking to help the police to deal with the disorder on the streets of London and elsewhere in our country. I've also met with the Metropolitan Police Commissioner and the Home Secretary to discuss this further. And people should be in no doubt that we will do everything necessary to restore order to Britain's streets and to make them safe for the law abiding. This is criminality, pure and simple, and it has to be confronted and defeated. As ever, police officers have shown incredible bravery on our streets in confronting these thugs. But it's quite clear that we need more, much more police on our streets, and we need even more robust police action. And it's that that I've been discussing in COBRA this morning. The Metropolitan Police Commissioner has said that compared with the 6,000 police on the streets last night in London, there will be some 16,000 officers tonight. All leave within the Metropolitan Police has been cancelled. There will be aid coming from police forces up and down the country. And we will do everything necessary to strengthen and assist those police forces that are meeting this disorder. There's already been 450 people arrested. We will make sure that court procedures and processes are speeded up and people should expect to see more, many more arrests in the days to come. I am determined, the government is determined that justice will be done and these people will see the consequences of their actions. And I have this very clear message to those people who are responsible for this wrongdoing and criminality. You will feel the full force of the law. And if you are old enough to commit these crimes, you are old enough to face the punishments. My office this morning has spoken to the Speaker of the House of Commons, and he has agreed that Parliament will be recalled for a day on Thursday, so I can make a statement to Parliament and we can hold a debate. And we are all able to stand together in condemnation of these crimes and also to stand together in determination to rebuild these communities. Now, if you'll excuse me, there is important work to be done. Thank you. Control of events, Prime Minister. Scenes of chaos and devastation, sites no one had predicted and which have shocked the country. This was a furniture store in Croydon, South London, last night ablaze with flames and smoke reaching into the sky. This morning, the owners gave their reaction. If it is the community doing it, uh, we don't understand. It's not comprehensive. There must be something completely wrong in the system of the country that allows this to happen. Yesterday, there was trouble in the afternoon in Hackney. In broad daylight, there were running battles between youths and police. This wave of violence began following the death of this man, Mark Duggan, on Thursday in Tottenham.
He was shot by police in circumstances still unclear. Protests began locally at his killing with a march to the police station, but tension boiled over into violence, which has spread across London and now to other cities. There now appears little unifying the violence, other than a desire to cause damage and to steal. It's led to football games being called off, including the England friendly tomorrow at Wembley, and it's less than a year until London is due to host the Olympics. The police are at full stretch, all cells in London are now full. Three people have been arrested on suspicion of the attempted murder of a police officer. Police have blamed social media for helping to spread the trouble and asked parents to take responsibility for their children. In Battersea last night, police used armoured vehicles and say they'll now consider using this tactic elsewhere. There have even been calls for the use of water cannons, the introduction of curfews or bringing in the army. This morning, many communities are cleaning up. They're hoping that tonight will not bring more trouble and hoping that police and the government can find a way of preventing that happening. Gordon Carrera, BBC News. Um, the Prime Minister's now announced that essentially London is going to be swamped with police officers tonight. Is that the kind of thing that local people where you are want to hear? Well, I'm sure in some quarters that will be welcomed. But, you know, the people I was speaking to here this morning will simply tell you it's too late. Just look at what's happened to their town centre. Many of them saying, where were those police officers when we needed them last night? Uh, I'm told that when hundreds of masked youths came rampaging down these streets, setting fire to shops, businesses and don't forget homes too, uh, that they were simply left here unprotected, according to people we've been speaking to, that there weren't any police officers here for a good few hours, certainly not down at this end of the town. So there is a certain amount of bitterness amongst many of the people who live and work here. Worth pointing out that those businesses that were set alight last night, they're just trying to um, cool them down now. But many of those businesses had flats living above them, many people living above those. We've spoken to people here this morning who've lost their homes, uh, who frankly were lucky to get out alive. So no doubt while plenty here will be very pleased to hear that there are extra reinforcements being called, and including, in fact, the Croydon Central MP who has admitted that there simply weren't enough officers here last night to do the job that needed doing. So whilst the, uh, the pledge will no doubt be welcomed for many people who've lost their homes, seen their businesses wrecked, uh, it's perhaps very little comfort indeed. Tottenham Hale Retail Park. By Sunday evening, trouble had spread to several other London areas. In Enfield, in the north, youths vandalised police cars and smashed shop windows. Missiles were thrown at police in Brixton and Walthamstow, Islington, Edmonton and even Oxford Circus in the West End were attacked by the trouble.